threat of disaster is never pleasant. Welcome to the Casual Preppers Podcast. These safety measures are essential. The only place for prepping, survival, and entertainment. This will be your source of survival instructions and information. Every member of the family must be coached in the business of survival. Here are your hosts, Cam and Kobe. Mm-hmm. Mm, this, yep. Delicious. <laughs> going on cameron nope, nope. nothing <laughs> nope <laughs> nope I ain't answering that brain question. ain't working i ain't answering it's early that question. <laughs> i know we're doing this uh in the morning which is very odd for us it does feel odd we don't know what i feel we're doing. like refreshed but yeah i'm just not i don't know it's weird haven't I'm, been talking to anybody yet no so. it's like <clears throat> get that stuff out of your throat. Yeah, still got that gunk going. going. I'm excited about today's episode, though, Cam. I am too. It's actually pretty fascinating. Mindless Banner 117, and what is the topic? Well, we're going to talk about Tesla cars, mm-hmm. Elon Musk. Elon and, Musk. No. We actually are going to talk about Elon just a little bit. Is it in there a little yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, uh, we figured this dude is super interesting. Yeah. Nikola Tesla. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a lot of things in our world, mm-hmm. in our hands daily that really um kind of were kicked off by him so yeah dude, you gotta thank the guy he's a, dude. He's a weird old dude though <laughs> he is, was a weird old dude he is eccentric so no if you doubt. like electricity and <laughs> lightning bolts and electrocution pigeons this is a good one yeah if you love pigeons you love pigeons this you're is gonna be into you. this one yeah but before we get into it mm-hmm. i want to talk to you about something other than electricity mm-hmm. it's called self-reliant medical care oh, yeah. It's a big part of your bug out plan or bugging in plan or bugging around plan. Bugging around, baby. You just got to make mm-hmm. sure you have all the medical knowledge you need. Mm-hmm. The Prepper's Medical Handbook is written by someone that knows medicine and mm-hmm. he knows the wilderness. Yeah. And he knows how to survive. This guy is the Nikola Tesla of <laughs> yeah. preparedness medicine, yeah. right? His name's William W. Forgey. Mm-hmm. He's an MD and he provides the basis of prevention, identification, and long term management of those survivable medical conditions that you or your bugging out group. Mm. No, uh, won't know, and no need to know. The organized structure of this book allows you to quickly find the important information you need to take care of yourself, put on a Band-Aid, mm. store some Band-Aids, make a bug out bag with your medical kit in it. Um, it just It goes over all this stuff, and it's super essential to your bugging out or prepper library, and I, I suggest you go get it. Mm. It's uh, You can go to PreppersMedicalHandbook.com if you want to look a little through the book and see what you want, or just go to Amazon.com, see this way to do it all. Yeah. So Love we'll it. get you one. It's great. Go get it done, kids. Um, so let's talk about Nikola Tesla. Who was this dude? Uh, he was born in 1856, long, long, long time ago, yeah. which is now Croatia. And here's here, there's a little bit of like a, a mystique surrounding his birth, <laughs> yeah. of course, right? He, w- he was born in the midst of a horrific lightning storm. Just came down a lightning bolt. Like, I mean, how fitting is this for that's Nikola so, Tesla? That's so funny. Reportedly, the storm was so bad that the midwife got the willies. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine, like, you at the doctor's and wouldn't have, Ooh. That is storm. <laughs> Give me chills. I don't know about this. <laughs> I mean, go home. Your water broke, but now I'm getting the chills. I had that <laughs> cervix doing, but <laughs> I don't know. And, he's, and he told Tesla's mother that because of the nasty weather... The baby would be a child of dark. It'll be a child of darkness, That's no doubt. Said. Yeah, a child of darkness. Can you be like, well, thank I'm, you? I'm paying for this. Look at this cute little baby. <laughs> Guess what? You're gonna be child of darkness. Child of darkness. <laughs> Put a diaper on it. I got the wheelies. <laughs> 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 That's weird. It's just, I mean, it's so funny. Luckily, Nicola's mother, she had no room for this kind of morbid nonsense. Get out! In her wife. The baby's out, now you get yeah. out. And she says, no, he will be a child of light. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she's like, well, uh-uh, you know? So anyways, funny. this is a little bit of a story behind his birth, which just is so fitting for this dude. His father, Mulatin Tesla, Mulatin, um, was a priest of the Eastern Orthodox Church. That's cool. Tesla's mother, Duca Mandic. Mandich? I don't know how to say any of these names. Duca, though, is her name. <laughs> Duca. Um, she had a talent. Lovely little child, Lovely. Duca. Duca. Have you seen Duca's new little baby? <laughs> child of darkness. <laughs> that little child of darkness came right out of Duca. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, she had a talent for making home craft tools. And mechanical appliances. Okay. <laughs> like, that was her talent. I don't just like them. Put together, I don't know, made a toaster this morning. <laughs> you know. I make babies, mm. and I make electrical devices. Children of darkness. 
home craft That's funny that she was like an inventor, though. And also, she had the ability to memorize Serbian epic poems. Oh. Just a little party trick she had (laughs) that she liked to show off here and there. In 1861, Tesla attended primary school in Smiljan, where he studied German, arithmetic, and religion. Nice. Just, you know, basic Smiljan studies. <laughs> um, Nikola completed primary school, followed by middle school, got through it, flying colors. In 1870, Tesla moved to Karlovac to attend high school at the Higher Real Gymnasium. Just the gym? <laughs> sounds like he's just doing PE all day long. <laughs> That's what it sounds like, right? <laughs> yeah. Tesla was able to perform integral calculus in his head, which prompted his teachers to believe that he was cheating. He's like, I- I'm a child of darkness. I do it right in my head. That's what he sounded like. As a, you give me the will, you little boy. Get out of here. Get out of here, Nicola. Freaking weirdo. That's funny. Uh, he's like, that's too smart. Get out. Yeah, he's too smart. He finished his four-year term in three years, graduating in 1873. After graduating, Tesla returned to Smiljan, but soon contracted cholera. Oh. He was bedridden for nine months and was near death Jeez multiple Louise. times. Yeah, so he was out for the count. Um, which was no good. In a moment of despair, Tesla's father, who originally wanted him to enter the priesthood, obviously, following daddy's footsteps, promised to send him to the best engineering school if he recovered from the illness. Like, you get better, I'll <laughs> send you to school where you want. You stop puking and throwing up, and, yeah. and well, but that's the same thing. So. Re- <laughs> puking and throwing puking up. Puking and diarrhea. Or yeah, all vomiting. Whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Any of them. Just stop everything from coming out. Yeah. Um, In the next year, Tesla evaded conscription into the Austro-Hungarian army in Smiljan by running away southeast of Lika to Tom and and Jerry. (laughs) Tom and Jerry, near Gracek. All right. (laughs) There, he explored the mountains wearing hunter's garb. I don't know why that is like a... (laughs) Just like, I don't know how long he was in hunter's garb. But he was. It's looking, a big part yeah. of his life, though. He was wandering around the mountains in hunter's garb. This book's good. <laughs> yeah. But don't talk about his hunter garb and living in the wilderness. It's ridiculous. Um, Tesla said that his contact with nature made him stronger, both physically and mentally. He read many books while in Tom and, Ge- Je- Tom and, Tom Jerry, and Jerry, and later <laughs> said that Mark Twain's works had helped him to miraculously well, right. recover from little... his earlier illness. He had a weird thing with Mark Twain. Yeah. Weird thing. <laughs> Child of darkness. Yeah, child of darkness. He enrolled in the Imperial Royal Technical Imperial Royal Technical College. Uh, it's like a lot like ITT Tech, <laughs> I think. That's exactly what, <laughs> That's what I was thinking. The whole commercials time. <laughs> all over the place yeah. in Tom and Jerry at the yeah, time. It's like Nikola Tesla went to Imperial Royal Technical College. <laughs> He's working full Tiny time for town. <laughs> it's our Claim to fame. Yeah. Uh, in 1875, on a military frontier scholarship. He evaded the military, but then he got a military frontier scholarship. Don't ask me. Sounds like the U.S. government. Yeah. At Graz, Tesla noted his fascination with the detailed lectures on electricity and described how he made suggestions on improving the design of an electric motor the professor was demonstrating. So he's like, I'll, I'll make that better. Yeah. Take I'm that. I'm darkness. He's out of darkness. <laughs> There you go. By the th- his third year, he was failing in school, and he never even graduated, leaving Graz in December of 1878. One biographer suggests Tesla wasn't studying and may have been expelled for gambling and womanizing. I don't know about that. You know what I, I don't know about that either, because the rest of his life doesn't really... Um, He'd be so pissed about that. ...live up to the womanizing piece. I'm done with that. women. I'm done with <laughs> child of daughters. <laughs> <clears throat> Tesla then moved to Budapest, Hungary in 1881 to work at the Budapest Telephone Exchange, BTE. You uh, want this phone? I want that phone. Let's make an exchange. Let's exchange. <laughs> <laughs> During his employment, Tesla made many improvements to central station equipment and claimed to have perfected a telephone repeater or amplifier, which was never patented or publicly described. So he could be feeding us full of crap yep, there. No, we don't know. It's made up. In 1882, Tesla began working on what was then a brand new industry, installing indoor incandescent lighting citywide on large-scale electric power utilities. Nobody was doing that. He was one of the first. So that's like a it's brand like new thing. security systems back then. Or knives. Or knives. Or something, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, in June 1884, Tesla emigrated to the U.S. and began working almost immediately at Edison's Machine Works on Manhattan's Lower East Side. That was a very pivotal moment in yeah, his life, for sure. starting to work for Edison. And Edison was a man, obviously, right? At the time, Edison's company was using direct current electricity. And the newbie Tesla proposed an innovative idea replacing the inefficient direct current setup with what Tesla called alternating current. I think Cam's going to talk about this maybe mm-hmm. a little bit more later. It's in the invention. But obviously, 
AC, it's a big deal, mm-hmm. right? AC, DC. Yeah. Great man. I'm struck. Mm-hmm. Um, Edison scoffed at this. <sighs> Challenging Tesla to develop his ideas. You foolish boy. (laughs) Foolish boy. (laughs) Child of darkness. (laughs) AC current. Um, He's like, as incentive, Edison offered the broke young European inventor a $50,000 reward. I saw this in a couple of places. So. Yeah. So so Tesla took the challenge, and within, in only a few months, he offered Edison his successful results. Like, he did it. One problem, Edison was a huge jerk about the whole thing, and brushed Tesla off with a mean comment about how Tesla didn't understand American humor. Yeah. He's like, uh-uh. I was just joking, you dumb idiot. Um, so you kind of can't blame Tesla for leaving Edison's, Edison's company. Edison's an interesting dude. Like, yeah. He was definitely smart, but... He's, he's kind of a dick. dick. He was he a dick. Was a dick. Like he the, would just gobble up patents. Yeah. And, this is like the whole war between him and Westinghouse and, exactly. and all that is so interesting. It is. There's it was in that, like, what famous, our founding father, or not, no, whatever that, that series was on History Channel was oh, super really? good about it. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. It talked about the battle between them, and it's cool. It's yeah, it's cool. kind of nuts, all the things that went on, but... um. So he, um, he, after resigning from his post in the Continental Edison Company, Tesla kind of struggled to make money for his projects. He took up the odd job of digging ditches around New York just to get by. He was making like two bucks a day or something doing that. So I'm gonna make a hell of a lot more. Yeah, that. you wait. You're gonna hear the thunder. modified. Gonna hear the thunder. I guess that was Edison. But mm-hmm. after Edison stiffed Tesla's, I'll 50, get that Edison. I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what. <laughs> you need to see the. You know, the, the shot. And kind of this just, is where darkness is taking yeah, over. <laughs> darkness takes over at that point. Uh, Tesla finally got funding from George Westinghouse yeah. for his uh, his stuff. He, Westinghouse saw the potential in AC and decided to spread Tesla's invention across the country, powering the entire United States. The business war between Edison and Westinghouse and Tesla got pretty intense, but Tesla's technology won out, obviously. We have AC today, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Edison launched a campaign against AC, claiming it was dangerous and could kill people. Oh, you got I got to it. Do you have this one already? Mm, I have all that stuff. You can go ahead. Uh, anyways, uh, I'll let Cam talk about that. But uh, Tesla countered by... Just keep on going. You go what you want. Publicly countered by uh, subjecting himself to 250,000 yeah, volt shots. He's like, it's good. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. That was the end of Tesla. Yeah, and then Tesla died. So it's crazy. I'm like... I know. So much. Power. Yeah, and, and he, he his, most, of darkness. his most notable <laughs> victory came in 1896 when his AC invention harnessed the power of Niagara Falls, uh, sending electricity all the way to Buffalo, New York. Dang. Dang. Yeah, so that's that's kind of a little bit of a background on his life. Uh, obviously, there's a lot more, but let's talk about how weird this bro was. This dude was as weird as they come. Yeah. Like, he said most of his inventions, because Cam's going to talk about his inventions later, but, like, literally most of them came to him in visions. Oh, really? Like he I had, didn't see that. He'd have, like, this white... <laughs> Weird, he like saw that. I didn't fla- see that. <laughs> white flash, and all of a sudden, he would see like a finished three D model of it in his head. Wow! And that's why he had like, he had very little notes and in in diagrams and papers because all of it was in his noggin. You know what I mean? So pretty weird. That is. One else, even weirder, he hated pearls. <laughs> like he had a, an weird. absolute <laughs> hatred of pearls. For some reason, his hate was so strong that he refused to talk with women who wore pearls. <laughs> His secretary came to the lab wearing pearls one day, and Tesla's like, uh-uh, go home. I'm not going to deal with that You're, today. I'm like, dealing with your pearls today. so today. weird. I know. Like, it's really, really odd. So I don't you, like those pearls. Get those, uh, those round white balls out of here. Scratching his neck. <laughs> yeah, He's holding his ears on. <laughs> Get that Don't pearl. come in here with those on. Child of light. I'm a child of light. <laughs> Duca, Duca, help Duca, me, help, help me. me. Yeah, um, he also had unbelievably sharpened senses. He was kind of like a superhero in a way, or autistic, or autistic. <laughs> it was like he was definitely for sure. He was so sensitive to external stimuli. Tesla claimed he could hear thunder five hundred and fifty <laughs> miles away. <laughs> Did you hear that? It's got me about. <laughs> I don't know, give or take 400, that's, 500 miles away. That's two states away, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Mike, that's on. pretty impressive. 550 miles away. You just go nuts. All night long, you would not sleep. <laughs> I know. I, I keep hearing this thunder. <laughs> you was everywhere. You hear everything yeah. if that was the case. It's like, that was thunder. That bird just farted. I heard 300 it. 300 miles away. And I, like, I just farted, bro. <laughs> That wasn't fire. That thunder was within two meters. There's a man at the fair, and he's hungry. I can hear his stomach <laughs> growling. He's eating that. Fried or I can visualize and picture him. 3D view <laughs> exactly. of his belly. Uh, he could hear a pocket watch ticking three rooms away from him. 
That no, wonder he, no wonder he went insane. No, man. He or a fly as it landed on the table and a thud. It was just like, poof, poof, yeah. oh, yeah. This is just like how weird. Wow. When he was in college, he defined the sound of a locomotive thirty miles away from him as deafening. It is deafening. <laughs> so, what are you talking about? Shut your window. It's too loud. <laughs> The child of light must work. <laughs> How am I going to work in these conditions? Oh, that thunder's getting to me again. Kaduka, duka, duka. <laughs> hey, there's flies in here. I can't take it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Doctors believe that he had suffered a nervous breakdown, but no one at the time was familiar with sensory overload. He would have been one of them kids wearing the big... <laughs> The big things, the uh, ear muffs. <laughs> he would. You know, like everywhere he goes. Like, that would have been him. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, he, anyways. Yeah. Too bad he didn't. Because I know. Because maybe he wouldn't have went insane. Maybe he wouldn't have. Um, but maybe we wouldn't have what we have. I know. Um, OCD. Yeah. Um, he was very OCD. Add this to the to the other weirdness that he had. He was, like, intensely careful about avoiding germs. Ever since he got cholera, he's like, uh-uh. Ain't doing that again. <laughs> So he got a little nuts over it. He washed his hands constantly, always had fresh towels. He would avoid handshakes at all costs. Like, I ain't doing that. Um, and like he said that he had to it's have so like... It's so crazy oh to me, gosh. like these inventors and, and mm-hmm. geniuses, how like how weird they were. Well, I think it's a lot of times their brain works It's like when you're picking your skill set, you know, know, before you come to Earth. It's like, you want to be super intelligent, you're going to be weird as hell. Yeah, nobody's going to like you, <laughs> but you're going to invent some cool shit. I'm going to be smart. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> is there pigeons involved? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, then okay. Because Howard Hughes was like total oh, yeah. OCD and yeah. freak, psychos, but could man. design whatever he wanted. So. He was obsessed with the number three. Mm. Completely obsessed with it. Um, he reportedly always walked around He's a building. Three points. <laughs> <laughs> always walked around a building three times before entering it. <laughs> hey, let's go have something to eat at a restaurant. All right. This is a factory, Tesla. Gosh damn, you we got to schedule be, me. We got to be in here. Come on. Hold on, I'm on lap two. <laughs> Can't you hear that? <laughs> One more time. One, three, three, four, three, three. Washing his hands as he's walking around the building. Oh, man. <laughs> um, He would always wash his hands three times in a row. Like that, yeah, that's what he had Definitely an OCD. Do. Yeah. Only inhabiting a hotel room that was divisible by the number three. That's crazy. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> okay. You got something on the third floor. We only floor. have this room. No, I can't do that. I can't mm-hmm. do that. Can you change the room? Can't do that. Number? Can you change the room number? Yeah. Um, because yeah, you wouldn't. You just wouldn't do it. Um, his work, uh, his sleep schedule, and his eating habits were really odd too. He pretty much only slept two hours a night That's or crazy. or a day, uh, believing that three was too much time wasted. Um, he followed I do feel that <laughs> the Uberman sleep schedule: six twenty-minute naps spaced evenly throughout the day. Six twenty-minute naps, huh? Yeah, throughout the day. So that's I'm like gonna two suggest hours. that to my work. He should. Huh? Um, pretty. I need this for my brain. Mm-hmm. He eliminated all legumes, fish, and meat from his diet. He was basically a vegetarian. Oh yeah, I saw he was all kind mm-hmm. of freak about uric acid and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So. Which he didn't get gout. I'm sure. No, um, I guarantee it. You know, he ate twice a day: breakfast and dinner. No lunch. Oh, yeah, the lunch was a problem. Which was, I love lunch, man. Yeah. Um, he wore white gloves to dinner every evening. <laughs> like Mickey Mouse or something. <laughs> <laughs> right? I don't know. Oh, he wears man. white gloves to dinner every yeah. evening. Uh, which do you is- remember, do you remember the movie, um, Prestige? Yeah. That, like, his, like, uh, wasn't it David Bowie that portrayed him? I think so, yeah. That's what I, I kind of do picture him, like, just this kind of the- weird looking guy yeah. that's like. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, interesting. It is interesting. That was a good. That was a good uh, take on him. Yeah, Tesla uh, read voraciously and is reported to have an eidetic memory going beyond visual recall of the photographic memory. Yeah, he is said to have envisioned complete diagrams of inventions, sometimes working only from memory, not bothering to draw them. He spoke seven languages. Jeez, Louise, yeah. Come on. I can't even speak one. No, I'm. I'm just trying to figure this <laughs> one out. <laughs> trying to get it. Uh, <laughs> this is the probably the craziest thing. His final years were spent living on the 33rd floor, obviously, of the New York Hotel, New Yorker Hotel. His primary companion being the pigeons who visited him there. <laughs> He's like super like in love with them. Oh, like literally. Like, like he spent hours each week feeding pigeons in the park and routinely took home any that were injured so that he could nurse them back to health. 
I mean, that's not, it's weird, but it's not like crazy weird. <laughs> it gets weirder. He often kept the windows open in the hotel suite in which he lived so pigeons could visit when they wished, resulting in a horrible mess, obviously, <laughs> right? Which is really weird because he was so like weird about germs. You know what I mean? But not the poop of the bird. Not the, yeah, no. He once, speaking of all this, I got crapped on by a bird that's why last he had week. White gloves. Yeah. It's like white poop. It's yeah. like can't see it. I literally got. Oh, he freaking covered <laughs> in, in bird poo last week. It was horrible. <laughs> Anyways, um, he once even asked a hotel chef to prepare a special mix of seeds for his feathered friends. Uh, Tesla reportedly spoke to these pigeons, becoming particularly close to one female pigeon <laughs> <laughs> whom he claimed to love as if she were a human being. It's so crazy. I don't... I don't know. <laughs> Come in here. <laughs> I'm the child of light. <laughs> Stand on my finger. <laughs> Hop up here, little bird. <laughs> oh, I love it when you cool <laughs> like that. <laughs> According to the Smithsonian, um, oh no, he reportedly said, I love that pigeon as a man loves a woman. So crazy. And she loved me. As long as I had her, there was purpose to my life. <laughs> it's like one of those crazy old ladies that love their dogs uh -huh. or something like that much. Super obsessed with this bird. Yeah. According to the Smithsonian, one of Tesla's final reports described this female pigeon visiting him at his hotel window one night, apparently to inform the inventor that she was dying. <laughs> this is a sad, sad time. This is a sad story. Tesla claimed to see glowing light in the bird's eyes, brighter than his own light bulbs, and he allowed his beloved avian friend to die in his arms. <laughs> Pretty bird. Pretty bird. Pretty <laughs> Probably bird. want a cracker. <laughs> According to Tesla, this strange incident was a sign that he had completed his life's work and was ready to move on. So it didn't say what age he was in all this? Like, I didn't hear this age. Yeah. No. Man. I'm sure we could find he it. He loves some birds. Yeah, he had, he, those pigeons were just like his thing, you know? Pigeons, electricity, <laughs> washing his hands, three. <laughs> Lapping buildings Lapping before he buildings. <laughs> Yeah. So wow, that's well, that's interesting. Yeah, what an interesting life there. Oh my gosh, yeah. that, I, some of that lightning storm must have kind of fried his brain a it little did something. bit. Something, <laughs> yeah, yeah, something so, happened. Um, speaking of his career and inventions, so Tesla invented, predicted, and contributed to the development of hundreds of technological things that we use today in our lives. Yeah, remote controls. You like those? I do. Neon and fluorescent lights, boom. My favorite. Tesla. Wireless transmission, that's probably one of the biggest ones. Yeah. Like radio and TV mm -hmm. components um, were hugely part of Tesla's, like, invention. Like, he was pretty much, like, he he was right there with radio, like, inventing yeah. it. Like, yeah. A guy just, like, barely beat him. Like, barely. Yeah. Um, computers, smart uh, phones, laser beams, x-rays, robotics were all, like, all the components in mm -hmm. those are based off from the things that he helped design and, and or create himself. So, mm -hmm. but two, two major things that he invented, the Tesla coil mm -hmm. and AC current. And Kobe talked about the AC current. Um, I'll just mention a little bit about that one. But mm -hmm. the Tesla coils, Tesla coils are a type of electrical circuit used to generate low current, high voltage electricity. Um, man, it, I, I was reading about how these suckers work and how they can almost just be like self-generating, like they just keep oh, really? producing power in between the two, um, portions of it, but mm -hmm. it does, it does require energy input, mm -hmm. but it just like supercharges stuff. So wow. pretty cool. Yeah. But, um, and, and those types of things are what are used in our, you know, electronics today. During his stay in Colorado Springs, Tesla's intense research went overboard almost all the time. Mm -hmm. well, so that was like the thing that was in the prestige, that right? Is, is when that was where Colorado it was, Springs. was Colorado Springs. Yeah. Um, this is where he built one of the biggest Tesla coils. Mm -hmm. the, this large oscillator formed massive artificial lightning bolts that were sometimes as large as 30-foot sparks that could be... <laughs> be seen from 10 miles away. Jeez. Imagine just living there and it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's just Tesla up there. Yeah, it's an old pigeon lover <laughs> on a hill. <laughs> but um, the spread out of this electricity would electrocute butterflies causing, and also it would like, almost like an EMP, it would just cause citywide blackouts. They're like, dang it. <laughs> Tesla's up there Electrocuting butterflies. Again. It's like, but I'm like, how did his pigeons ever come by? Know. You think you just zap everything? Well, in the I, air. Th I think his pigeon obsession didn't happen till New York. Till he got older. That yeah. makes sense. Okay. 
Yeah, Colorado Springs doesn't have any pictures. Mm, I'm sure they do, but... <laughs> but um, pictures of Tesla sitting, uh, reading near that giant coil, like you've seen a lot of those like historical pictures of him just sitting there. And there's yeah. a huge Tesla mm-hmm. coil in the back and all the bolts Freaking lighting. cool pictures. So cool. I don't want to blow that up and put it on my I wall. I know. I'm so like, cool. I want one of those in my... That'd be yeah. quite the thing to show people. It's like, ah, don't worry about that Tesla coil. Tesla you ain't cool. going to get shocked by it. Mm-hmm. Um, he used the Tesla coil as a basis for experiments in electrical lighting, x-rays, phosphorescence, electrotherapy, and wireless transmission of electrical energy. So just the way that it spreads out all of that energy that it creates mm-hmm. is how he could like, I mean, fluorescent bulbs would light up and regular light bulbs without being plugged into anything. That's insane. Uh, yeah. That, he, I, like it makes, like, it's just. I think they showed that in the Prestige, didn't they? Yeah, he had they all did. those bulbs out in the field. Yeah, they just all right? lit up they because all lit up, of all yeah. of his, yeah. all the electrical waves passing but through. But that was like a real thing he did. I think there's like actual photos yeah. of that, right? Yeah. So it's pretty cool because it would like supercharge um, the electro, you know, the protons, electrons, microns, neutrons, yeah, neutrinos, <laughs> all that stuff. Exactly. But that's pretty cool that the air would just be charged. And I mean, yeah. we we see this today with certain things, but I mean, to be able to like use energy without being plugged in anything, mm-hmm. that was his big thing. Yeah. Um, and then this kind of led to the AC current, and like you were talking about, mm-hmm. he was not the inventor of AC current, but modified and perfected and kind of was... He built like an engine basically that worked yeah. off of AC in a way that <clears throat> So he wasn't sense, the sole right? inventor, but <clears throat> it wasn't until he actually got the funding from George Westinghouse that mm-hmm. he was able to like put his uh, work on AC, um, you know, in play and mm-hmm. actually be able to like push it as this really, this better uh, way of powering things mm-hmm. that's safer. And yeah. so like you were saying, Edison... <clears throat> Edison was uh, not happy with it, and he was pushing his direct current and would just smear Tesla big time. Mm-hmm. Westinghouse recalled, I remember Thomas Edison telling them that direct current was like a river flowing peacefully to the sea, <laughs> while alternating current was like a torrent rushing violently over a precipice. Imagine that. Why they uh, even had a professor named Harold Brown who went around talking to audiences and electrocuting <laughs> dogs and horses on stage <laughs> to show how dangerous alternating current Oh, was. my gosh. But then, uh, like you were saying, um, Tesla proved to everybody by ex- you know subjecting himself to 250,000 volts of shock to demonstrate its safety. Yeah. And then from there, there was a big bid for the Chicago World's Fair. Oh man! To uh, that one, light that whole thing. We should do an episode on the Chicago's World Fair one time because really? that is the craziest. <clears throat> I just remember time. about that of like powering and uh, the lighting and everything. There's so much about the World's Fair that is just insane. Really? There's like a, a serial killer happening at the same no time. Kidding. <laughs> like all like all this. The and first it was the first illuminated. L- illuminated yeah. yeah. So there was this big bid for it, and I think that um, Edison and wasn't it um, J.P. Morgan? I think that was mm-hmm. the backer for Edison. For but they they had like suggested. Well, J.P. Morgan, he was on both sides for a minute, but he, Edison. He, okay, yeah, maybe ended that's up, the case because he did give Tesla some he money. He did. He did. He was yeah. like kind of a, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. He would just support a lot of these different inventors, but um, I can't remember. It might not have been at that time, mm-hmm. but. Um, they put in a bid for like a million dollars and because AC current uses such uh, like way less electrical components, smaller uh, wiring, mm-hmm. so a lot less copper and everything, it came in like fifty, like 500,000 versus the million. And wow. so that won out and then today, as we know it, we got AC current as yeah. our primary power source. So sure. pretty cool. Yeah. So big deal. Other inventions, uh, those were his two biggest and most um, famous, but other ones were like magnifying transmitter. I don't even know what that is. Tesla mm-hmm. turbine. Sounds cool. Shadow graph, which is kind of a form of X-ray. Oh, okay. And then hydroelectric power, which you were talking about, the like Niagara mm-hmm. Falls. Um, induction motor, like vacuums and everything like that, mm-hmm. came from Tesla's designs. And then radio control boats, and I'll, I have a little more on that one. Wow, that's cool. But using remote control to like power things, you know, how mm-hmm. we do through the air. It's just crazy that that stuff came from his from Tesla testing in, yeah. and the Tesla coils and figuring out that energy can just be passed through the air. It's so crazy to me. This dude was nuts. So, oh, you yeah. know what? I'll bet you this dude had some nutrient survival at home, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got that many pigeons. You got that many. Basically, that's what he was eating. He <clears throat> yeah. avoided all the other. Exactly. You know, 
stuff that would cause problems. Because Nutrient Survival is made with real ingredients. It's made in America to keep Americans healthy, strong, and alert. Perfect for today, ready for anything ahead. From hearty, delicious entrees and nutrient-dense snacks to immunity-boosting drinks and strength-building shakes, each with 40 essential nutrients available in handy singles, daily-use pantry packs, durable cans, and 3-90 to day survival kits, keeping your world safe and your body in peak condition. This isn't your cheap, empty, calorie, bland food storage. This stuff actually has nutritional value. Check out their NREs. They're nutrition-ready to eat. They are awesome. Head over to Nutrient Survival. Survival.com. Use our code Casual Preppers. You're going to get 10% off your order, and you're going to get some great long-term shelf life food. Yeah, get yeah. it. We went camping, and I used the Southwestern medley. Oh, yeah, How and was it? beans and rice, and oh, yeah. yeah, much like it. Comparing, we had a couple of different freezer dried things mm-hmm. and, and different ones, and man. <laughs> Just the, all the nutrients that are in their little packs. It's ridiculous, It's huh? crazy how much better it is for you. Yeah. Go check um, it out. But yeah, let's talk about these some of the conspiracies with Well, him. yeah, let's talk about the Warden Cliff Tower. Have you ever heard of one of these? Yeah. Have you ever seen... There's one in Red Dead. Is there? Yeah. Um, <laughs> have you ever seen uh, Goosebumps 2? I think it's Goosebumps 2. Uh-huh. Is this the oh, kids? that's right, yeah. He's building the Warden Cliff Tower, right? Um, it's one of Tesla's prized projects over the years. It was known as also known as the Tesla Tower. It was an early experimental wireless transmission station. Such a cool looking tower, oh, it too. Is, yeah. Designed and built by Nikola Tesla on Long Island, 1901, 1902. Tesla intended to transmit messages, telephony, and even So this fa- was never <laughs> built in the West. It was built. I thought they had one like yeah, it was, somewhere in the West Coast. Too. Oh, in the West, I don't know. Or like or in Colorado Springs, but I don't think um, it ever was. I don't think so. He might have had a huge Tesla coil, but I don't think it awarded yeah, the tower. Yeah, I don't know that he did either. So he intended to transmit messages, telephony, and even facsimile images across the Atlantic Ocean to England and to ships at sea on his theories of using the Earth to conduct the signals. It's actually really interesting. The tower went 187 feet up into the sky. The base was just a, a frame of wood, but the giant ball on top, 68 feet in diameter, was made of steel. Um, on the ground below, there were said to be tunnels and an iron root system that went deep into the earth. <laughs> he believed... I'm going to ground this son of a... Yeah. He believed the tower was the start of a system that could deliver electricity without wires to the whole world. That would be so amazing. So no there was, power lines or anything. Yeah. Just like, it'd be so clean. So I read two different things on this, so maybe there was two different ways of doing it. One of it was saying it was going to go through the air, right? But the one said that like... Um, would it pass through the ground? It would pass through the ground because of these iron that would kind of make sense roots and then there would be other ones around the earth and it would pick so I think it up that would conduct better than you would think so conducting through the air but, but there was also going to be like I'm wireless no tesla i'm no child of darkness <laughs> there was also going to be like wireless transmission of information and stuff through the air so oh, okay. uh, it's just really really crazy thing he had going on tesla secured backing a solid hundred and fifty thousand dollars from jp yeah. morgan so that's about five and a half million dollars today a lot of wow. money Construction began in 1901 in Long Island, what became known as the Warden Cliff Tower. Tesla imagined that it would be the beginning of a network of towers, 30 at least around the world. That's it? <clears throat> Just 30. He believed that these towers would allow him to send electricity through the atmosphere, which anyone with the correct equipment harp. could tap. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what he's kind of working on. Electric power would be ubiquitous. He would make the whole world of this globe, the whole of this globe quiver. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Just like one of my pigeons. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? After the financing dried up, Tesla mortgaged the property. He just couldn't ever make it. Like, he didn't have enough money to finish it exactly how he thought it should Which be sucks. finished. So, and J.P. Morgan's like, I ain't giving you any more money. That was a lot. Um, and so he had to mortgage the property, and eventually, as his financial troubles grew deeper, he lost it all together. Then in 1917, the new owner, trying to recoup some value, had the tower dynamited down and converted into scrap metal. Awesome. Like how, they're idiots. Thank you, I know. Uh, you know how cool it would be to see that today? I know, it would be amazing. <sighs> I'd heard there's like a restoration project to I heard try too. and build something similar mm-hmm. to like, oh, that'd be awesome. I heard that too. There are some who say that the government actually stopped the technology because they thought it would have given free emergency, uh, free oh, yeah. energy that would across cut down the down on a ton of like, yeah. Income and jobs too. I mean, so that's like one of the conspiracies around this. Also, adding to the Tesla mythology and conspiracy theories was the timing of the demolition of the tower 
during World War I, 1917. Various stories were told that the tower was demolished on orders of the United States government because German spies were using it as a radio transmitter or observation post. And, yeah. You know? Like some of the stuff that comes up during war yeah. of what we've like pushed technology to for it, ah. but also destroyed or stopped yeah. technology because we worried because it was it. used against yeah. us. It's like, it's crazy. It is crazy. So, so anyways, that's the Warden Cliff Tower. Yeah. Um, speaking of military use, mm-hmm. uh, the death ray or mm. death beam, um, Tesla's name is tied to this a lot because he often like talked of building this and having it and, yeah. but, um, I'll, I'll talk about it, uh, now. So <laughs> okay. the, I was like, <laughs> I won't go that. into that one part of the detail. Mm. Um, so Tesla said it, the, this weapon that he had designed, he, he would talk about it for like, I think it, like a decade or more mm-hmm. about this um weapon um he said it was a beam of metal ions hurling along two hundred seventy thousand miles per hour okay roughly roughly as for how this beam was possible <laughs> tesla was always coy he never really explained the physics of it of course but, yeah and um no one has ever dreamed about it like he there's no way you could like prove him wrong because i mean the guy's a genius with electricity so right. they were like how does it work? And he, he like would never say. He nevertheless bragged about his work to any reporter who would listen. The all penetrating beam Hello. would back a hundred billion watts into just one one hundredth mil one hundred millionth of a square centimeter. One point twenty one gigawatts. So like tons of power in the small area. Wow. He teased the teleforce weapon for decades, saying that it could shoot down airplanes wow. from two hundred fifty miles away. Okay, so that's the so same it was thing. like I put this used. down later Did you? too. Because it, it, they call them different things. They do. You There's know what like I mean? beams and, and yeah, a, an array. The teleforce and weapon, though. A, that's Raygon. Raygon. Yeah. Despite definitely. claims to the contrary, Tesla never provided much proof that the death ray worked, but no one could quite dismiss it, the idea wow, either. They yeah. couldn't really challenge it. So some believe that it worked and was um, was stolen by the government. And, and classified. Mm-hmm. And so, and others believe that it was just a ploy or scheme to earn money to allow for more interesting science. He was just trying to earn money yeah. saying that he had this amazing technology. I, I think if the government stole it, we would have seen it by now. I think so too. They would have used it. So governments were very interested in this project. Um, but just as World War II was starting, Tesla passed away and his nephew, who was also living in New York, this was always, this is a big interesting story too, mm-hmm. that like when he passed away, um, his nephew that was an ambassador for Yugoslavia Yugoslavia at the time was communist. <laughs> and so that led to later Cold War stuff. But he, he came into the apartment with a locksmith and got into his safe and took some of the papers and things that were in there. But And the government wasn't happy with this. This is a little bit of a confusing history because some say that yeah. like the government got a hold of his stuff first. And then others say that his nephew was able to get some that the government wasn't happy with. There was like four articles. But he also got. That all had different Yeah, so I was like, this yeah. is a little bit mixed. But um, but anyway, um, leading up to World War II, he passed away. So the death ray and everything was kind of like mysterious and they mm-hmm. didn't know much about it. And then after World War II ended. The Cold War ramped up quickly. American military leaders were desperate for the edge against the communist Soviet Union, and some of them, dazzled by the name of Nikola Tesla, um, talked themselves into believing that death rays were real. And so they spent time like really reser- researching this, and they created Project Nick. Mm, Pretty cool. That is cool. Nothing ever came of it, though. The military think. never released any details about the work. And the frightening new development, however, quickly renewed American interest in the beam. So... Saying before that his nephew had taking, taken some of the papers and things like that, he donated it to the museum in Belgrade, which was in communist Yugoslavia. Huh. So they were terrified that the Soviet Union was going to get this edge on this death ray because between the 50s and 70s, the Soviets made several cryptic announcements um, saying that, for instance, once bragged that Nikita Khrushchev. Khrushchev, Khrushchev yeah. Who's that? Uh, he was a premier. Right? Yeah. But yeah. I didn't know much about him oh, yeah, in know. history. I thought you were like, oh, no, yeah, no. yeah, I read books about him. No, 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 no. Oh. I, I know Once the name. Once but... that, uh, a, new, a new and fantastic mm-hmm. weapon was in the hatching stage. <laughs> and so the United States was like, oh, crap. Maybe mm-hmm. that enough of the diagrams and documents from his nephew had made it into yeah. the hands of the Soviets. Oof. So the government tasked, I thought this is interesting. You you found this. I didn't. Yeah. Um, 
MIT scientist John G. Trump, Mm -hmm. former President Donald Trump's uncle, (laughs) with evaluating Tesla's papers. Isn't that crazy? I know. I had no idea. How weird. There was a bigger, like, yeah, anyway. Trump looked for any ideas of significant value and rifled through Tesla's papers and declared that Tesla's notes were primarily of speculative, speculative, fizzle philosophical and promotional character there's kind of nonsense yeah the thing is like you were saying tesla like didn't draw or that, make yeah. anything like he it was kn- all in his head he, he knew it all so yeah that is they didn't um find any actual plans for creating anything like this so the u.s government sent tesla's remaining files to his nephew in 1952 but although they had seized 80 cases uh Kos- uh Kosanovic received just 60 mm. so maybe they packed the 80 into 60, or maybe they took the parts that were most interesting and could develop into something. So, yeah. Um, one part on this death ray I thought was pretty funny is Tesla once paid for an overdue hotel bill by giving the managers a little wooden box, which he said contained the work, the working of the famous death beam. Mm. No cash, no credit cards, just a little box with an apocalyptic weapon of mass destruction <laughs> inside. Yeah. And he warned the managers to never, ever, ever open that box for their own safety. <laughs> So, during that time that they were researching papers and stuff, they knew about this box, and that's yeah. that's when they actually decided, let's just, one of the physicists had decided, let's open it, you know, take the risk. And they opened it up, and inside the box was um, was a, a wheat stone bridge, a tool for measuring electrical resistance. Um, basically, <clears throat> common device that's wow. junk. So... He, he didn't have anything in that box. They think he was just using it to just get out of paying for his room. They're like, don't open it. I, I would not, like, yeah. if Tesla gave you something like that, the weird dude, I'd be like, either there's a dead pigeon in here yeah. or there's a bomb in here. Yeah. And so, um, but the government was interested in this too, and they went through it, and it ended up just being <laughs> a, uh, a wheat stone bridge. How weird is that, man? So anyways, yeah, uh, crazy. So he's tied to that death beam and they mm-hmm. never knew if he ever had actual plans and could design something like that. Never wrote it down or the papers are somewhere in someone's hands that yeah. they can't figure it out. Man, it's so crazy. It's cool stuff. So you remember the Philadelphia experiment, Cameron? Yeah, yeah. Some claims that Tesla was involved in that secret government project to make the ship invisible. Um, there's there's not a lot on that on the internet other than peop- there's like little sentences here and there that says, oh, he it was, was in- coming up to that time of yes. World War II, huh? Yeah. Um, so anyways, but theories about the project's connection to time travel and other advanced technology were also talked about. So speaking of time travel, there's there's a lot of stuff um, around Tesla and time travel, which is really interesting to me. Some think that he had a time machine. According to reports in 1895, Tesla made a shocking discovery that suggested that time and space yeah, could be affected by magnetic fields. Uh, Tesla thought that he could disrupt the continuity of time and space by using intense magnetic field effects. Uh, Tesla's assistant explains the existence of Tesla's work on time travel and the fact that he may have partially realized it. Tesla was exposed to magnetic waves that he had artificially produced during which he found himself in a completely different space-time window (laughs) where he could see both the past and the future and the present all at once. He could see everything all at once. Um, the magnetic field he was exposed to, like it basically almost killed him. So the, so the, uh, the assistant turned it off and he's like, that's why he was angry with me. He was mad that (laughs) because he was going to die. He was like, he's going to die if I don't turn this off after Tesla's death, the notes, which were curious by everyone were collected by the FBI overnight and they disappeared. Nah, so can SB FBI, either they lose stuff all mm -hmm, the time mm -hmm. or they've got this. Yep. Huge library of exactly. interesting stuff. So anyways, his assistant literally said that he had figured out some sort of time travel, or at least a way to see into the future and into the past. Hmm. So well, that's, that's interesting. pretty cool. I found an article by Jade Nice. I don't know who this is, a WHS journalist. This is from 2019. And he said, before I begin with the idea that I have personally researched, I would like to say that it is based purely on factual opinion. <laughs> so whatever that's supposed What's to mean. What's factual opinion? <laughs> yeah. This conspiracy is on the idea of time travel and how it may or may not relate to Nikola Tesla. He said, I believe that Tesla was a time traveler who came from the future of the time period in which he lived. I also theorize that he has side effects that were caused by that huge jump in space time like his white flashes before a sudden thought about inventions came to his brain. 
Because he has an extreme case of obsessive compulsive disorder, it caused him to have certain things in a to have certain things in a very specific way, like he absolutely hated jewelry and despised any woman who wore it. I theorize that the government figured these things out and rid the world of him in attempts to cover it up as best they could. He goes on to talk about all of like the insane inventions that he should, you know, and how he changed the world. And also another part of this series that the government faked his death, swooped in, kidnapped Tesla, kept him out of the public eye, and had him help us develop war weapons and advanced technology um, because he already believed in it before we did. So interesting. That's that's like a some journalist who said that, <laughs> that that's kind of what was going on. Um, There's no way designing all this stuff, he didn't get electrocuted a billion and a half oh, times. Yeah, so I think that had some play like in his The guy life. from the great outdoors. <laughs> you know what I mean? That guy. Yeah. like Getting struck by lightning a million constantly. times. Constantly. Um, lastly, it is believed that when Tesla actually passed away, they took a piece of his DNA in order to clone him. <laughs> right? Which is where it is said Elon Musk may have gotten... Because they thought about the possibility back in yeah, the they did, 1930s. Apparently. Which is where it is said Elon Musk may have gotten his intelligent, futuristic thoughts in scientific perception. Elon Musk is that clone, is what they're saying. The person he is derived from has many similar beliefs to his own, thus his usage of AC motors rather than DC. <laughs> Perhaps the inventions that Musk has created are poss possibly just the lost documents from Tesla's hotel room. Interesting. The weird thing is when you know that a lot about Elon, yeah, you know that he's more of a businessman than he a, is a business than man. A, like because he didn't he didn't start Tesla, you know he just bought right. it and, and ran it in in a good way and like I mean he's obviously an engineer but yeah it's just it's an interesting uh, thought there. that is it yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. always a little conspiracy behind yep. some. Um, so we talk about, we've talked about the Tunguska event before. Yeah, yeah. And so super interesting. It's still, I, I still think about that sucker of like yeah. how the, all the different possibilities of what actually happened. We just, we don't really understand exactly what happened. So no. just a little refresher, the Tunguska event, approximately 12 megaton explosion that occurred near Podka Menya, uh, Tunguska river in Yenisek government. I don't know. I'm not even going to try it. <laughs> Basically in Russia nowadays. Yeah. Um, it was on June 30th, 1908. Yeah. The explosion over the sparsely populated eastern Siberian taiga flattened an estimated 80 million trees over the area. So we talked about it could be like a mm -hmm. um, it, like a meteor that blew up above the ground and just kind of wiped everything out. Mm -hmm. We don't know. Or we a don't UFO. Know. Or a UFO. Yep. yep. So we, it's just weird that it happened in a, a really remote place. Mm -hmm. And, and it was so massive and so powerful. So we talked about that event. Um, what's interesting is a lot of people tie Tesla into that because during the time that he was doing all of his uh, research and mm -hmm. talking about this energy weapon and death ray and death beam was when this happened. So yeah. a lot of people think that he probably tested it out there. Yeah, that possibly. makes sense. I could see that. I know. I could see that too. Yeah. So Tesla was known to be working on that. Um, also, some other interesting facts is during this time, Tesla was also known to be working on a sort of sort of wireless torpedo called a telomaton, tel mm. telomaton or something. Telautomaton. Yeah. Telautomaton. That makes more sense. Um, which was remote control boat he offered to the U.S. Navy for the purpose of carrying explosives to naval targets. Mm. An airborne version of this was under development as uh, as well. Some also like believe, a drone. Yeah, basically. Some also believe that there was. Um, a Tesla connection that the weapon test of this aerial version was what caused yeah. this huge Tunguska event. Mm -hmm. Even though a 1908 time frame doesn't match or does match up for Tesla working on such device, um, an invention with such power and everything mm -hmm. it seems kind of a stretch. A but, little out of the norm But it is there. weird that it's during that time. I know. It's unexplained still today. Another theory is that Tesla... Uh, intermittently made a massive explosion when he was trying to get the attention of an ex explorer friend in the area. <laughs> Tesla was always fascinated Come with the on. concept of wireless propagation, and he was known to work on a uh, projected wave energy process that could create microscopic, invisible particles of concentrated energy that could be beamed great distances, often resulting in electric fireballs, spherical plasmoids, or ball lightning. So basically, he was trying to text him. So he's trying yeah, to send him a so, message. I mean, what better way to text than to send like a spherical plasmoid? Yeah, I mean, you ball lightning gets your attention. That's, yeah, so some say that he's just like 
trying to send this message and just like put too much power into it. He's like, hey, this SOB ain't responding. Boom. I'm turning it up plasmoid, to 11. And he just caused this huge, yeah. massive explosion. So, And then he just like turned off the machine and went and like had lunch somewhere. Yeah, like, like, oh, piss, crap. Oh, piss, oh, piss, <laughs> yeah, oh, piss. What, what did I do? <laughs> Oh, Come on, birds, let's get out of here. Yeah, I wish I could fly. So it's away. kind of funny though. I, I do. Do we even mention Tesla when we talked so. about it? That wasn't mm. one of the things that we had talked about. No. So, anyways, yeah. So he was testing that death ray, possibly, yeah. and that's what the Tunguska event was. Actually, so I like that. Makes sense. It was towards yeah. Russia uh-huh. sure. during that. He's starting to build. Exactly. Well, actually, he had died before the Cold War. Yeah. Anyway, pretty crazy. Thought that was interesting. If I was like on like a Siberian like exploration thing, I would definitely make sure that I had some off the grid surplus clothing. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. On top of your spherical yeah. plasmoid exactly. ability. Yeah, I mean, off the grid surplus. Their mission is to inspire greater connection through adventure. They do that by creating extremely functional and everyday wearable products for a great price to take you off the grid, even if that means Siberia. <laughs> for sure. Tunguska, right? How do they do that? They simplify your clothing options so you only need one piece of clothing instead of three or four. Well, as we talk about the tactical jumpsuit, right, Cam? <laughs> they combine the best features from outdoor workwear and tactical into one everyday wearable package. That, to me, is like the greatest thing that they do. They bring together like all these different I want that sort of- onesie, though. I and it should too. be inspired by casual preppers. Yeah, stay survived, <laughs> so patch on it sweet. somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. Check out their new Happy Trails collection before it all sells out. Check out their site, offthegridsurplus.com. Get an extra 15% off with our code, Casual Preppers 15 It's shorts season. Oh, their shorts You got to the go best. get their shorts. They are the best shorts on the face of the planet. They are? Yeah, Nikola Tesla would probably wear them. He would. I guarantee No doubt. You. Him and his pigeons would be hanging around. He got them shorts on. You know what I mean? His pigeons had a little vest. Yeah. Carrying around like. Molly webbing on it. (laughs) You know what I mean? That's so cool. Yeah. That's so cool. So let's talk about the alien incident. Tesla's reputation as a living mad scientist was cemented by the so-called alien incident. There's not a lot on this other than um, at one point his mental faculties were called into question by much of the scientific ex- establishment after he declared that he was receiving messages from inhabitants of either Mars or Venus. That's so cool. Over his radio receiving equipment. He's like, I'm hearing them. <laughs> They're talking to me right now. I can hear thunder 500 miles away. <laughs> yeah. I guarantee you with this I equipment, can hear I can hear Mars and Venus and yeah. all that. It ain't hard, okay? <laughs> I'm figuring it out. Uh, He believed that there was life in the universe besides our own and was intensely interested in finding ways to communicate with other inhabitants of our solar system. Unfortunately, Tesla was never able to convince other scientists that he had detected signs of intelligent extraterrestrials. So he just said that, you know, I'm, I don't know, I've been talking to him. Yeah. I don't know what you guys have been doing, but I'm hearing him. I'm I'm talking to Mars. I'm talking to Venus. Trust me. (laughs) And a pigeon lands on his shoulder. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go walk around a building three times. Yeah. I got to go wash my hands. I thought that was kind of cool, though. Yeah. Um, interesting. I, I had, I saw something on this that um, scientists nowadays figure that he was picking up the magnetic field from Jupiter. Oh, really? And that's what was distorting his oh. sa- the sound and stuff like the that. The CMB, maybe? The yeah. Cosmic yeah, right yeah exactly. Back yeah. <laughs> Even more confusing there. Yeah. Um, I thought this was cool, and okay. I really wish this would have been developed. So, electric... Powered supersonic airship. That sounds like a airship. Seventies, so cool, like a seventies funk song or something or band. <laughs> <It's> supersonic. <laughs> the supersonic airship's playing tonight. Electric powered supersonic airship. <laughs> mm-hmm. From the time Tesla was a boy, he had a fat. He was fascinated with flight. What kid yeah. isn't? I know everybody is. Yeah. Combining his knowledge of electrical and mechanical engineering, he began to think more of an aviation, uh, more about aviation after the fa- failure at Wardenclyffe. Um, in an article in July 1919 uh, of Reconstruction Magazine, Tesla discussed his work on a developing on developing a supersonic aircraft that would travel eight miles above the surface of Earth and generate speeds allowing passengers to travel between New York and London in three hours. Mm. So it's just a magnet. It's like a hoverboard, yeah. but clear up in the eight miles up. Eight miles up. Wow. Tesla's concept called for the aircraft to be powered by electrically transmitted wire, electricity transmitted wirelessly, which is his big thing, yeah. for the power from power plants on the ground, eliminating the need for the aircraft to carry fuel. Wow! The power supply is virtually unlimited, as any number of power plants can be operated together, supplying energy to airships, just as trains running on tracks 
are now supplied with electrical energy through rails mm. and wires. Interesting. Basically, just magnetic or, or just yeah. transmitted power. You're just going to travel with unlimited amount of um, mm. fuel, which is, that's insane to me. Yeah. You don't need um, combustion. You don't need anything like that. You're just using electricity. And of course, the government. Shut it down. Shut it down. It does. It does make you think. Yeah. Like there was a lot of, um, there's a lot of wealth in oil. Oh yeah, and 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 power that way. Yeah. So it's like we do not want Tesla ships way up there no. flying around. Uh uh-uh. uh. Just keep drilling. <laughs> it's pretty baby. cool. Yeah. Um, that would be awesome though. Mm-hmm. Travel by electricity. That's just continuous. Yeah, it's pretty cool. How about the artificial tidal wave? That sounds cool. (laughs) Tesla believed the power of science could be harnessed to prevent war. Uh, He Obviously, he had the death beam going on, but he also wanted to prevent war. In 1907, the New York World reported on another of Tesla's military innovations in which wireless telegraphy would trigger the detonations of high explosives at sea to generate tidal waves so vast that they would capsize entire enemy fleets. So basically, it's like, you know, electrical signals go out, blow up stuff under the water, and create tidal waves, which doesn't electricity seem, and water. It doesn't really seem that far fetched. Yeah, wouldn't this make sense to like electrocute everything in that region rather than just like I don't know. cause it to? Like- I don't know. I don't know. The newspaper reported that the artificial tidal wave would make navies as useless as the paper boats that babies float in bathtubs. <laughs> and foreshadowing That's a powerful state yeah, right there. And foreshadowing later claims about the development of nuclear weapons by its horrors hasten the day of universal peace. <sighs> yeah. So Cam already talked about this, so I'll just go over it quick. The teleforce, an invisible Chinese wall of defense. Oh. Uh, created by hypothetical erection of a dozen transmitter towers along the American coasts, was capable of melting airplane motors at a distance of 250 miles. Oh, so this is part of that. Yeah, that's like that same death thing. ray, death mm-hmm. beam, and was based on an entirely new principle of physics that no one has ever dreamt about. He said, "This device, according to Tesla, was designed to prevent any future wars. It requires little imagination, however, to come up with a multitude of other possible applications for what he called." The peace ray. Yeah. It was Not more the of a defense yeah. than mm-hmm. it was. Exactly. That's super interesting. Mm-hmm. I know that like Yugoslavia and all those places were eager to get this kind of technology during the start of World War II. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. It's like, we want to cook those motors. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> this one would be awesome. Not. Mm-hmm. I don't sure. think I'd like this one. <laughs> I wouldn't either. Tessa <laughs> believed it could be possible to photograph thoughts. The inspiration came while he was doing experiments in 1893 told a newspaper reporter decades later, I became convinced that a definite um, image formed in thought must, by reflex action, produce a corresponding image on the retina, which might possibly be read by suitable by a suitable apparatus. Hmm. The inventor conceived a reflecting of reflecting an image on an artificial retina, taking a photograph and projecting the image on a screen. If this can be done successfully, then the objects imagined by a person would be clearly reflected on the screen as they are formed. Hmm. This would be all over the place for me. It would just be like, boom, food, boom, sex, boom. Pigeon. (laughs) pigeon Tesla. It would just be all over the place. Tesla having sex with a pigeon. Every man, you know, it would be like, this is pornographic, we got to turn this off. Every (laughs) other image. Yeah, it's like, it's like, Food, uh, it's sex. like fight club. It's like these yeah. little images pop in there. Exactly, like, they're not yeah. supposed to be in there. Um, and in this way, every thought of an individual could be read. Our minds would then indeed be like open books. It's so true, though. It's like sometimes you're like, "What? Don't don't think about that." I don't. know. It's Stop. just like control it. <laughs> yeah, Does it make any sense? So if like that was all projected, like, if it no. was all projected above you, oh my gosh, yeah. Well, let's see that, what he's thinking about right now. It was actually now. a book or in a movie. About well, that, that. movie. Um, the, that had yep Tom Holland in it. Yeah, he was like projecting what mm. they were thinking. That'd be terrible. Yeah, not a great movie, but like, did it, you watch it? Yeah, I never did. It's not. It wasn't horrible. It wasn't. Didn't great. it have Eleven in it? The girl. The I can't remember the one from um, Stranger yeah. Things. Millie Bobby Brown. Yeah, Millie Bobby Brown. Millie Bobby Brown. How about an earthquake machine? Of course. Heck yeah. That's everybody thinks about this one. Ah, uh, heck yeah. In 1893, Tesla patented a steam-powered mechanical oscillator. They would vibrate up and down at speeds, high speeds to generate electricity. Years after patenting his invention, he told reporters that one day while attempting to tune his mechanical oscillator to the vibration of the building housing his New York City laboratory, he caused the ground to shake. (laughs) During the test, Tesla continuously turned up the power and heard cracking sounds. Well, that ain't good. (laughs) 
What's cracking? What's cracking like? What's cracking like? <laughs> What's cracking like? Dear diary. That's where that came from. Everything's cracking like. <laughs> yeah. Suddenly he recalled that the heavy machinery in the place was flying. All the heavy machinery in the place was flying around. I grabbed a hammer and broke the machine. Like to me, it's like, is there not an off switch on this <laughs> oscillator that you built? I don't get uh, it. I just had to get a hammer and break. Just the like machine. everything, like lifting, <laughs> like just floating, like yeah, exactly. We got to turn this off. The building would have been down about our ears in another few minutes. He said. Police and ambulances arrived on the scene to attend to the commotion, but Tesla told his assistants to remain quiet. Shh, tell the police it must have been an earthquake. <laughs> don't say a damn word. Didn't affect anywhere else in town, but yeah. There is also a tale of Nikola Tesla and his personal friend Mark Twain. We know they were buddies, right? When Tesla made his claims of inventing an earthquake machine, Twain came over. He had to see it. I've got to see this machine, Nikola. Put the book down. Yep. <laughs> Uncle Barry Finn put it down. <laughs> I'm almost done. I'll be over in a minute. Yeah. Finish the last chapter after I check out his earthquake. That's what Mark Twain sounds like, apparently. Yeah. I don't know. Well, okay. <laughs> okay. Let's turn it on, Nick. Nick, I'll be over in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Twain, nary a minute, I'll be there. Um, <laughs> knowing that Twain had recently been experiencing some digestive issues, Tesla had him stand on a platform about the oscillator and then turn it on. If legend is true... Twain pooped in his white suit instantly and bolted for the bathroom. <laughs> so that happened apparently. You know, <laughs> made Mark Twain poop his pants, <laughs> poop his suit. Twas a turd in my pants. <laughs> I need to. Oh, Nick, Nick, what have you done? Nick, ruined my suit. You're at it again. <laughs> Genius. 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 I've defecated my britches, Nick. <laughs> Brilliant. 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 I will come over here to take a crap in your studio every yep. day. You've done it. <laughs> You've done it. I must go finish Huck Finn now. I feel so relieved. <laughs> <laughs> These pants are destroyed. Like I ate a pound of bran this morning. That was wonderful. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> I'll write a book after you. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So, um, this we kind of already talked about. Yeah. Um, so Tesla, uh, you know what? I'll talk about this later. Should okay. We just skip over that. No, okay. How about some of the weird views and some of the weird predictions he had? In, 19, in a 1915 article, he predicted that electricity would lead to the purging of microbes, insects, and rodents from the earth. Get rid of all of them, not a mouse. <laughs> Not a spider, nothing <laughs> because of electricity. I don't know how he thought that was going to happen, but mm -hmm. that's pretty weird. He also predicted that electrical baths would be in every I, home. I wish he would have gotten that, yeah. working with the the insects. Yeah, oh, I know, man. It's supercharged around here. Yeah. And just everything dies. Mm -hmm. The bath would rid the body of dust or other small particles that the municipalities would adopt electric dust absorbers and devices to sterilize air, food, and water. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of nice. He disagreed with Einstein. Now, this these did not age well, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. for, for old Nick. Tesla was not a fan of relativity, describing it as a beggar wrapped in purple whom <laughs> ignorant people take for a king. <laughs> yeah, that did not age well. Did Sorry it? about that. Yeah, I hold that space cannot be curved for a simple reason that it can have no properties. It might as well be said that God has properties. He has not, but only <laughs> attributes, and these are of our own making, of properties we can only speak when dealing with matter filling the space. So mm -hmm. It's like, gravity ain't a thing. You Too can't... bad Einstein became rather <laughs> successful <laughs> yes. and proved he you was can't quite curve the genius. Space time, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. He also thought he had measured something faster than the speed of light. Which was also against... The speed of Tesla. Yeah, uh, theory of relativity. One reason why he was so con confident that Einstein was wrong is because he believed he had measured faster than light travel. A cosmic ray from Antares, the brightest star in the Scorpio constellation, which he thought was moving at speeds 50 times faster than the speed of the speed limit of wow. the universe, which is the speed of light. Also, <laughs> he thought the atom could not be split. Yeah. <laughs> It's too bad, huh? Yeah. The idea of atomic energy is illusionary, but it has taken so powerful a hold on the minds that although I have preached against it for 25 years, there still are some who may believe it to be realizable. That's the thing. It's like, yeah. 
a genius mind mm -hmm. that like thought up all these amazing things. Not always right, but couldn't go that direction. Nope. Isn't and that others weird? did and took it that direction, yep. which is so crazy. So, um, sad ending for Tesla. Mm. Just as Tesla's mysteries, death ray was starting to take more and more interest. Tesla, Tesla's health had deteriorated. Yeah. He was deathly skinny and prone to fainting. Yeah. Just get passing out all the time. <laughs> yeah. And he's on his second lap. He's passed out six <laughs> times around the building. Can't get in a damn house. <laughs> Keep fainting. <laughs> By early 19- Nicola, get in here. <laughs> And he's out about again. Tain's about again. to shit his pants again. <laughs> his freaking heart was probably like yeah. in AFib or VTAC, like just <laughs> all over the place from all the electrical problems. Yeah. By early 1943, he was living in a room on the 33rd floor of the New Yorker Hotel. Have you ever seen the Penn New Yorker Station? Hotel? Mm -mm. It's kind of creepy. Looking. Is it? Like it just makes sense that that's where he would live. Really? Yeah. It's a little, really disturbing. Yeah. A do not disturb sign permanently fixed to his door. On January 8th, the maid ignored the sign, walked into the room, and found the old man dead, reportedly naked except for his socks. <laughs> he was 86 years old naked when he passed away alone and in debt. Wow. Tesla's cause of death was coronary thrombosis. Directly after his death, all the events took place that I talked about in, you know, death ray. Yeah. Tesla died in, um, or speculation is rampant as to whether the U.S. might be doing, what they might be doing with some of Tesla's materials. Mm -hmm. They think that some of it was taken it's still being studied and, and broken down. Yeah. Yeah, so look, this is the New Yorker Hotel. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, it is It's super, still there and everything. Huh? Yeah, it's creepy looking. It does. You know what I mean? I don't know so, what it is, yeah. something about it. So we died in there. Yeah. Crazy, man. Interesting life, but, yeah. man, we have a lot of stuff because of him. We do. A lot of, a lot of nice uh, technologically. Like yeah, everything we're doing today is all because yeah. of him. Yeah. Um, and also, everything we're doing today is because of TACPAC. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> the only monthly tactical subscription box with useful, professional, great stuff inside. Use our code CASUALPREPPERS. You're going to get a free $70 machine-made part from Next Level Armament. A you're death gonna, ray. Freaking death you're ray, gonna most You're going to get a death likely. ray in their box. Yeah, uh, I've gotten two. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to do with the other one. It's an EDC death ray, the one I got. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I got a travel one as well. It's I don't know. It's great. Yeah. Anyways, use our code Casual Preppers. You're gonna get that free stuff from Tech Pack. Awesome. Um, yeah, that's that's Nikola Tesla, man. That's Super, fun yeah, stuff. Interesting. All yeah. the like stuff around his life. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Who knows? Who I don't know. We may have way better electrical technology that mm -hmm. is just you know being held mm -hmm. because a lot of people would lose money. Freaking government. You never know. Yeah. You never know. Um, just a, a reminder: if you do get this early enough, Cam and I are going to be. In Farmington, Utah, tomorrow, which is June second, twenty twenty three, at the Be Ready Expo for uh, a few hours in the afternoon, Friday yeah. afternoon. So, going around talking mm -hmm. to people. So, if you want showing to, off our death ray, yep, I'm um, gonna have one in my pocket. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a pigeon on my yeah. arm. Who knows? <laughs> so, if you guys want to come say hi, please do that. We'd love to to say hi. We're just gonna check out everything that's going on there, and that's it. That, yep. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, guys. Stay survived.